In today's chapter, we'll be introducing modules in JavaScript. Now, modules are basically created by making use of namespaces. So, let's first understand why do we need namespaces. Over here, we are having our HTML page which is having a div element with course list and a button which is calling a function called display courses. Now, we have got two files namespace basics.js and a random list.js file. Now, inside our namespace basics, all we have is a list of courses as an array and then we are accessing the course list and then looping it and displaying it inside that div element. Over here in our random list or JS, we have courses and price variable. Now what happens is when we include a random list or JS file in our namespace basics.html, it will override the value of courses that we have over here in our namespace basics.js file. So this courses variable will be overwritten by this course is variable so now if I try to execute this function display courses let's see what happens so we are on our page now in the browser and now let's click on display courses and there you go you can see that it's not the expected result now this can happen because you might be including several libraries or several other files from other developers if you're working on a big project and there might be a scenario where the variable names might be same if you're following a certain convention or otherwise as well now to avoid such scenarios like the one we are experiencing here we should be making use of namespace so let's get started with namespace in our namespace basics.js file will be introducing namespace now the logic behind namespace you must have understood by now is that it limits global impact and provide data protection and to create a namespace all we need to do is create a wrapper object and that wrapper object is usually mentioned in all caps as a convention so we can say where skill bakery as the key name to our wrapper and then everything that we want to put will be inside this wrapper object so this is how the updated version is going to look first thing you will notice is the list inside the namespace these variables that we had earlier outside are now properties of this namespace and we have to tweak it a bit to make it functional so over here list is now a function which is basically referring to the same course list the courses remains exactly like that you can see that we have also not made use of the keyword var over here so that is also not required then for the doc frag as well we are returning it the create document fragment as a function you will also notice that we have the function inside the namespace as well and when the function is inside the namespace the properties that we just now declared can be accessed by referring them with the keyword this so you can see that over here we are accessing the doc fragment and list these are basically functions that's why you are seeing the parentheses over here and they are being cached as local variables doc frag and list which are later being used in the function so here you can see the list the doc fragment here as well so we have cached it locally once we have executed that function the doc fragment will create the instance of the newly created document fragment and the list will have the reference to the courses list element and after that we are simply looping through our courses and appending it in the newly created list and finally assigning it to the element so now if i run this one even though we have included random list.js and that's containing a courses variable you'll notice that it's not going to impact our code one more thing that you need to do is you can access that function now by making use of the namespace dot the function name so here we have skill bakery dot display courses now once that's done let's run this and browser and see it in action let's click on display courses now and there you go all our courses are coming up nice and proper so with namespace we reduce global footprint of variables while also keeping data grouped around their intended functionality also the namespace remains agnostic of other namespaces unless we the creators design it in a way to work together by providing each with wrapper names so a developer can create one file with 
the same namespace as we have created over here and the other developer also can have a similar namespace and they can have a different set of functionalities wrapped together and then when used inside an HTML file in this fashion those two script files together will extend the whole functionality so it's like small chunks of code that is required for the page can be divided based on the functionality and they can be wrapped inside a single namespace so that was a little introduction on namespaces we'll see more in the upcoming lectures